behind us is the Fiat 500 Lounge. It's the quirky city car, it's competitively priced and it's rather economical as well. The model we have here has a 1.2 litre petrol engine producing 69 horsepower. You can also get the 900cc version as well and for some reason they've got more brake horsepower. It is a little bit strange that It is, is. there must be some kind of trickery <laughs> going on with the engines. The model we tested is just over £15,000, however the range does start from £11,620. And if you're wanting a powerful 500, well you could always go for the Abarth, or you could go for the X, or the L, and the list goes on. There is plenty to choose from, isn't there? There There's is. definitely a car for everyone in the 500 family. Yeah. I'm going to be taking a look at the interior, the practicality. I'll be looking at the styling, the exterior. We'll then both be driving it to bring you our verdict on whether or not this is the car for you. If you are looking for more car reviews then subscribe to our channel and remember to turn on the notifications. Stepping into the 500 lounge, it's light and airy in here. You have this large insert that matches the exterior body colour, the retro dials, these tartan seats You've even got the 500 logo embroidered into the top. Along the top of the doors and along the top of the dash, you do have hard plastics, but everything in here is very well put together. When it comes to functionality, you have electrically operated door mirrors, your media controls on your steering wheel, automatic lights and automatic wipers, cruise control and your TFT instrument cluster, which has retro styling with the fuel gauge and the speedometer. It also has a nice chrome surround that continues with the infotainment system. You have Apple CarPlay, SatNav, USB connectivity, Bluetooth, all the things you want in a city car. You have city steering mode, your digital air conditioning, your electric windows, 12 volt socket, auxiliary, and USB. When it comes to practicality, I've got lots of leg room and lots of headroom, even with the sunroof. All of the seat adjustment is done manually, but the height adjustment is a little bit too close to the handbrake. The seating position is nice and high, so you have a good view of the road and it gives you that bit of extra leg room. The steering has height adjustment, but no reach adjustment, but you don't expect that in a car of this size. When it comes to storage, you have decent sized door bins that can easily manage a bottle of water, two cup holders in the middle here, two more back here, some little change pots here and here, and a decent sized glove box. Overall, the 500 lounge is a very nice place to be with the retro styling, the chrome door handles, the leather wrapped steering wheel with more chrome accents, it really does set this car apart from the competition. Stepping into the back of the car, there are no rear doors so you do have to clamber in from the front. Once you're back here, you have an ample amount of headroom. You can fit two adults back here, but it's probably more suited for children. There is also Isofix points on both these outer seats. Some nice additions would have been some padding on these little armrests some pop-out rear windows, and if you're looking for a cup holder, you've got to be mischievous and steal these ones. Coming to the boot of the car, you have 185 litres of space on offer. Admittedly, it's not the biggest boot in the world, but for this class of car, it's just right. You have the world's smallest parcel shelf, split-folding rear seats. Now, admittedly, you do have a bit of a load lip, and a bit of a lip between the seats and the boot floor, but once the seats are folded down, you have 550 litres of space back here. It would have been nice to see some carpeting on the back of the rear seats, but you do have carpeting on the rear of the boot, and you even have a little pull handle. And if you get a flat, there is an inflation kit underneath the boot floor. First thing you'll notice about the Fiat 500 lounge are these bubbly headlamps. You've also got heritage as well. And it's all wrapped up in chrome. But that's because this car's got the chrome pack. As I said, heritage. Well, what do I mean? Well, this is the grille that was on the original 500s. Okay, it's not the exact one, but it's very similar. There's modern touches too. You've got rain sensing wipers, automatic headlamps. You've also got daytime LED running lights. There's no pedestrian or vehicle detection, but you don't really see it on the competitors either. And there's no parking sensors, but on a car this size, you don't need them. Coming to the side of the car, the first thing you'll notice are these 16 inch alloy wheels, which I think look rather cool and quirky and cute with the styling. You've also got electrically adjusted heated mirrors, sunroof, there is no privacy glass, but that would make it far too dark. 
Stepping around to the rear of the car, the first thing you'll notice are the parking sensors. And, well, that's about it. I mean, it's got the chrome pack, so you've got the chrome just above the bumper. But what else do you need? It's a city car. So what's the Fiat 500 lounge like to drive? Well, I think the first word that comes to my mind is easy. It is. It's perfect for city driving, isn't it? Yeah, the steering's nice and light, the pedals are light, the gearbox is, has a very good shift to it. Yeah. It's very easy to use, it's perfect for cities and towns. Yeah, especially with that button as well, which um, well, just allows easy manoeuvring, doesn't it? And lightens the steering even more. Yeah, it's great for when you're doing parking manoeuvres and that sort of thing. But, I mean, these are developed for Italy, aren't they? So, thin yeah. roads. We do have a 1.2 litre petrol engine under the bonnet. With a staggering 69 horses. Yeah, it's not, it's not exactly a powerhouse, no. is it? Um, I think if you're looking for something with performance, then you want to go and look at a bath. Yeah, and then you get an extra 100 brake horsepower on top of that. There are a range of 0.9 litre engines as well to choose from. They, I imagine, would probably be a better choice. I think that it would just be a... Well, it is strange that the 1.269 and the 900ccs are, at, what, 100? Yeah, they have a little bit more horsepower, I think. Yeah. I think they would probably be a better choice. Yeah, it would definitely have a bit more oomph. But this is relatively economical, because it's got a bigger engine. That's it. It, it is very economical, in fact. I've, yeah. I've had over 50 mpg out of it at times. Yeah. Um, even when you're going from some more spirited driving, it's very difficult to get it, get it below 40. Yeah. One gripe I usually have with little cars is the gearboxes, mm. but this one I don't have a problem with at all. It's very, it has a very nice shift to it, it's not notchy. It's very refined, isn't it? Yeah, I really do like that. Um, it's not something you often see on little cars. No, it's not. Another thing, a gripe of ours with little cars is headroom. But this is loads! Yeah. I, I mean, I'm six foot three, and look, and Michael's big hair. <laughs> it still doesn't even, you know, touch that sunroof, so yeah. I I do like this roof as well, it makes it very nice and light and airy in here. It does. It's a pity it doesn't open. Mm, yeah. The steering, when when it comes to all the handling parts of the car, yeah. uh, when it, what it, what it's, it's like It's a blast on the back lane, isn't it? Oh yeah, like, you can use all of the power all of the time with this car. Yes. The steering has a nice weight to it, it's, it's very responsive, it, you, the car goes exactly where you want it to. It does. I find it brakes exceptionally well as well. Yeah, it's it, you feel it's set up very well. You feel very under control in this car. Yeah, there's not it does. You know, the suspension's very well set out as well. Yes, it's able to handle spirited driving, but it's not too stiff and firm when going around. It's town. more bouncy, isn't it? But it's not too bouncy, and there's I mean very little body roll. Yeah, it's able to manage potholes. It's yeah. able to manage you know our rather dilapidated roads in Britain. Now, like I said, this engine isn't a powerhouse, but if you are willing to rev it higher in the rev range and put it in third gear going up a hill, then you're gonna be all right. It's, you know, it is able to cope. Yeah, the thing that you do notice, if if you try and floor it in a certain gear on a hill, then it will hesitate, won't it? Yeah, you find yourself having to downshift. And... Yes. But that comes with, I mean, it's a 1.2 engine, isn't it? I think it's probably because we drove the 595 Turismo before this car. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, that sets our uh, standards rather high, <laughs> didn't it, for the 500? I think this is, it is a perfect car for poodling to the shops. Oh, yeah. For a, you know, a, a first car. Yeah. I think it's very, very well suited for that. It's very manageable power and it's very easy to control. It'd make a very good first car, wouldn't it? Yeah. Something I was surprised about is this car's actually Euro NCAP free. Yeah, that surprised me, but then when you look into it, it's actually, it's it's to do with things like pedestrian detection, isn't it? And collision detection yeah, too. Yeah, autonomous emergency braking, that sort of stuff. But really, on a car this size, you... Well, it cost them a fortune to put it in. Well, yeah, and also, you don't really expect it from a car this size. No, you don't, no. So what's our verdict of the Fiat 500 lounge? Well, it's the perfect quirky city car, isn't it? Yeah, it's economical, it's practical enough for what it is. 
and it's very good to drive really. It is, yeah, it handles exceptionally well. I mean, okay, it's a city car, but it copes just as well in the country. Yeah, that 1.2 litre engine's a really good unit. Admittedly, it does have 140 pound road tax. But you could go for the 900cc models instead. Yep, overall, if you're looking for a quirky, stylish city car, then it's well worth taking a look at. For more impartial car reviews, please subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions about this particular car, leave them below and we'll endeavour to get back to you.